also got the Ogun State PDP governorship candidate, Mr. Goyega Isiaka, on the hot seat. He is making a second attempt for the governorship race in Ogun State. He comments on his four pillar manifestos, which includes expansion of Ogun State economy, good governance, youth empowerment, and infrastructural development. He criticizes Senator Amoson's model school policy as a mere cosmetic. Interestingly, he's made to sign a verbal bond on the show that he will not loot public treasury if given the chance to govern Ogun State. Take a listen. You're making the second bid to the government's house as the governor of Ogun State for the second attempt now. Why do you feel that you have to go back? Uh, don't you feel daunted by the last defeat of 2011 elections? Well, thank you very much. Um, it is because of my conviction that um, I have what it takes to run the state and uh, like I always like to say, to make this coming generation, you know, be, you know coming behind us, uh, to make Ogun State better for them. And um, I mean, that has been the, the conviction right from the beginning. Um, that yet we can do everything that we want to do as a human being, but we must also con contribute to the, you know, to, 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 to our people's development and uh, I'm a service to the people. Now, when you look at the build up to Ogun State's governorship elections, the PDP in particular, many analysts feel that the PDP lost because of the implosion within the party and that gave way for the APC to cash in. Are you not sensing a replay of similar implosion within your party in Ogun State this time around? I think if there's a replay, the replay is really more in the opposition than in PDP. Yes, we have our own issues, but I think the exact description of what you have said and the sad thing that happened in 2011 to the PDP is probably what is happening now to the APC. Why is the PDP in Ogun State still having this crisis of disaffection? Uh, is four years not enough to put their house in order? Talking about the PDP, your own party in Ogun State. Yes, we learned from 2011, but you know again, in political you know, um, contest of the nature that we have, uh, there are bound to be uh, little, little skirmishes here and there, uh, which, is, which we are really working at, um, at, at, you know, at, at resolving. Now, when you look at the PDP state apparatus, many see Chief Buruji Kashamu as an influential member of your party, but we have reports that he is not endorsing your candidacy. Could you tell us more about this? I am the candidate of the party, and as the candidate of the party, I'm enjoying the support of every member of the party, including Chief Buruji Kashamu and every other, you know, leader and followers and supporters of the party. And where we are no support because there are issues arising from primaries, we are resolving it, like I, like I said. So everybody is supporting the candidate of the party, and I am the candidate of the party. Analysts have narrowed this race, the Ogun State Governatorial Contest, to essentially a two-horse race between the PDP, your own party, and the APC. How do you see this playing out come 2015 governorship elections in Ogun State? Well, we're going to win. We're going to defeat the APC. Um, we, in the first instance, you know, the government has not done well. Um, the government has not been sincere. The government has not, um, that's, I mean, the Ibukuli Amosu government, um, has not been um, visionary enough um, to take our state to the next level. For instance, let, let's take the schools as an example. What I was what I was saying is that the number, the, the quantum of resources that have been put into those two things called model schools, which we have all over the states, in, for, in bushes and in forests, all over the state. And they are spending over 1.3 billion naira to, to, you know, to build one of those schools. None of them is ready, by the way, um, almost three years or so, you know, that we said. And we are saying that the resources that have been going into those schools, for instance, 50% of that resources will have turned around the schools that we have all around, most of the schools that we have in this state, and will have had a direct impact on the life of the people and the life of the children of this, of this state, instead of going around to begin to go and put what we call so-called model schools in bushes and forests. Some people jokingly refer to them as schools of forestry. What's your agenda for education, apart from the model schools which you have criticized on uh, Senator Ibukula Amosun's administration? Yes, we're going to provide a free education for, um, for primary and secondary and secondary school. And for the tertiary institutions, 
it will not be completely free, but we're going to discuss and negotiate with the students so that we can come up with what I call an acceptable uh, you know, level of fees to be paid um, you know, during, the, uh, the, you know, during the school days. Now, there is a rising trend now in the belief system in Nigeria. Many believe that one of the things that entices a potential candidate to run for governorship position or public office in general is the desire to loot public treasury. Now, could you look into the eye of the camera and tell Nigerians that you are not going to loot public treasury should you be given the opportunity to become the next governor of a state? Well, I will not loot public treasury. For seven years, I was the MD of Gateway Holdings of Ogun State. Um, that is the investment you know, um, hub of Ogun State. And I'm able to say that for those seven years, I gave a good account of myself. Now, Nigerians would also want you to have a bond on what you've said so far. Could you tell Nigerians your four-year plan, the projects, the specific projects you would be completing within the first four years of your administration? We will ensure that the under that agri is given a pride of place um we're going to focus a lot on that and that impact is going to be felt in the news and crannies of the state we'll also ensure that most of our economic projects that life-changing economic projects are if not completed we embark on them and drive them quite far um the local life you know, project, uh, free tourism project, for instance, the deep sea port and the phosphate project, and the number of resources that we have as a state. Uh, we ensure that we get investors into them so that we can engender development and engender employment from, you know, from some of those things, uh, you know, that we have. I know for certain, for instance, that the state has the capacity to be classified as an oil producing state by virtue of being the only literal state that is not so classified. So we also intend to pursue that. And therefore, God's willing, we will also be, will be able to achieve that. That's under our economy. Under the, our education, uh, the social services, which is our pillar two, we're going to ensure that our schools are, most of our schools, if not all, at least more than 70% of our schools, come up to speed in terms of standard, in terms of facilities. Education, science education is the bedrock of what you know, of the future. Science and engineering is the bedrock of the future of any nation. Therefore, we're going to put a lot of emphasis in terms of laboratory, science laboratory, and engineering laboratory in majority, at least not less than 70% of our schools. And that'll be all on this episode of Roadmap 2015. Don't forget to send us your comments on our different social media platforms shown on your screen. Join us next week for another exciting episode of the program on Channels Television. Many thanks for watching. I'm Binga Ashiru saying goodbye.